Welcome back, everyone. My friend Tom is an amateur photographer who lives in my community. I asked him if he could send me a couple raw images to play around with. So he sent this lovely photo of the moon rising over the Santa Catalina Mountains near our home. I thought I would show you how I took it from raw to this composite image in just around eight minutes. Raw photos are basically unprocessed images stored in your camera. When you open up a raw image in Affinity Photo 2, it takes you straight to the developed persona for further processing. You'll notice that the studio here is different from the normal photo persona. There are very few tools on the left-hand toolbar. Most of the actual processing work is done in the panels in the lower right side of the studio. The subject of this picture is definitely the moon, and it's a little blurred, so I'll focus on making that look as good as possible. I'll start by raising the clarity slider up a bit to see if I can get more detail to come out. You can click on the little preview icons at the top to get a before and after view. You can see right away by moving the slider that the clarity has improved quite a bit. I'll play with all these other settings a bit to see how they affect the image. I upped the saturation by 22% and the vibrance by 12%. This provides for a more colourful image. Then. I'll make minor changes to the white balance sliders and then I'll bring down the shadows slider about 57% to make the sky and foreground quite a bit darker. This makes the moon stand out even more. Alright, I'm going to go back to the top of the basics panel and I'll lower the black point just a little bit. This slider is pretty sensitive so I won't do too much. Now look at that before and after improvement. I would say it's dramatically different and just about what I was hoping for. So I'll go ahead and click Develop to Bake in these changes. Well, if you've watched very many of my videos, you'll know I can't stop here. I want to see what else I can do to make this image more interesting to me. I'll start by clicking on the layer and clicking Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Then select the lower layer and double click on the name to change it to original. I'll do the same for the duplicate layer. I'll call it duplicate. Then with the duplicate layer selected, I'll go to the selection brush tool in the left hand toolbar and I'll paint over the moon. I'll click command or control J to duplicate the selected area which puts the moon itself into a new layer. Next, I want to get rid of some of the fuzzy tree tip remnants from the foreground. So I'll click on the In Painting Brush tool in the left hand toolbar and I'll brush over them. You can see Affinity put a red overlay onto where you paint and then it does a pretty good job making these distracting bits disappear. All right, looking better already. Now, I want to isolate the foreground from the background. To do this, I'll select my pen tool from the left-hand toolbar and I'll make a series of dots along the edge of the mountain. I'll speed this up a bit so as to not bore you. Just put the little dots at close to each change in the outline of the mountains. And then put a dot on each of the corners and complete the curve by ending at the starting point. Okay, now that I have my outline, I'm going to switch to the node tool. I'll drag my cursor over all the little dots on the top of the foreground to select them. Then I'll click the smooth button in the top toolbar to smooth the curve between them and give it a more natural look. Now, I'll click back on the pen tool and then the selection button in the top toolbar. You'll see those little marching ants come out indicating the selected area. I'll duplicate the selected area by clicking on Command or Control J. And then I'll rename this layer Foreground. OK, to remove the little ants, I'll click Command or Control D to deselect. Then. With the foreground layer selected, I'll go to the adjustment button at the bottom of the layers panel and select brightness contrast. 
I'll lower the brightness all the way down to make the foreground black. Then, I'll drag and drop the brightness adjustment layer onto the foreground layer below, so it only affects the foreground layer. Next, I'll select the duplicate background layer and then go to my Live Filters button at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'll click on Gaussian Blur and then raise the slider all the way up. This will smooth out the sky a bit while adding a slight glow effect to the moon. Alright, now notice that the extreme Gaussian Blur filter caused a blurry white outline around the edges of the image. To fix this, I'll go to the Crop tool in the left-hand toolbar and I'll drag the corner node in a bit. To maintain the original aspect ratio, I'll change the little drop-down in the top toolbar. The grid on the Crop tool is set to the rule of thirds to aid in the composition of the image. I'll center the moon right in the top left third of the picture. Once I have things where I want them, I'll click Apply to bake in the changes. Alright, now I'm going to make the sky a bit more interesting by adding some stars between the duplicate background and the foreground cutout. To do this, I'll select the duplicate background and then go to File and then Place. I'll select this nice star field image I found on Pexels.com. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Next, I'll drag the cursor from the top left corner down across the entire image. Notice that this new layer is blocking the image of the duplicate background layer below it. I want some of the sky from the original picture to show through. So, with the star layer selected, I'll click on the Layer Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel to add a mask over on the stars. Then, I'll go to the Gradient tool in the left-hand toolbar and drag my cursor from top to bottom with a white to black gradient. As the gradient gets darker, more and more of the layer below will show through the mask. Next, I think I want this moon to have a little more glow about it. So, I'll select the moon layer and then click Command or Control J to duplicate it. Then, I'll select the lower moon layer and hold Command or Control while dragging the corner node outward to expand the image from its center. Then I'll go to the Live Filters button at the bottom of the Layers panel and I'll select Gaussian Blur and I'll raise the slider way up to give it a nice blurry glow. This may be a bit too bright, so I'll just go up to the Opacity slider in the top of the Layers panel and slide it to the left a little to reduce the glow. Alright, one more thing and I'll let you go. I just noticed that the foreground looks a bit blurry around the edges. I'll just select the layer and then pull on the corner node to expand it a bit. Then I'll move it up slowly so that the crisp line of the cutout shows in the image. Alright, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.